Hi guys, hope you're well. Uh, today we're going to make a veneer style Makume Gane. And I'm saying veneer style because obviously that's not the style of Makume I normally do. I normally do quite a thick stack of it, don't I? We're going to just make a nice veneer. Uh, and this is for a challenge to be fair. Um, hence the colours I'm using. Um, it's autumn or fall colours. Uh, I'm not putting a green in, I'm just using these three souffles which are, if I can find the colours for you, Latte, Cowboy, which always makes me laugh when I read it, and Pumpkin, which is perfect, isn't it, uh, for autumn. Uh, I'm also going to be using this little texture plate, it's from Happy Hands, I recently did a haul video. Um, so go back and have a look in my haul playlist if you want some more information about this and I'm not making a massive stack of this guys I'm just going to make enough for one pendant I'm just going to use a square pendant and I've just got a little square here uh, to add a bit of interest uh, so um, I'm just going to use um, one square each of each colour and we're just going to roll and stack and roll and stack I'll go and get some prepared and I'll see you in a more. Okay guys, I've got a square of each and these are all on a zero setting. I've also done um, a piece of orange for my backing um, and I've put this through on a three setting. Uh, I'm just gonna put that to one side, we don't need it yet. Now, all you need to do with this is really decide what you want your dominant colour to be. Um, and I'm going to have this um, latte beige colour as my dominant colour. So I'm going to put that on the top. So I'm just going to put these colours together. Just give them a smooth, make sure that... I haven't got any air trapped and as I've, as I've said I want this beige colour to be my dominant colour so I want that on the top now you could pass this through your pasta machine on your thickest setting if you so wish uh, I'm just going to do it by hand guys, I prefer to do that, uh, so I'm just going to get my 3mm guides, in fact I think I'll get my 6mm first, uh, my 4.5mm first, if I can find them, yeah, because I don't want to take it down too quick, um, and I'm just going to then roll this stack out just gently making sure that the bottom rolls with the top again like I say guys to be quicker you can put it through your pasta machine uh, I'm just doing it by hand uh, on camera then I don't have to keep pausing the camera uh, so I've taken that down to um, four and a half and now I'm just going to take it down to three. I did it in stages, guys, then I wouldn't overstretch it. Then the top matches the bottom. And of course, I'm not making a massive stack, as I said. Just a small stack. Right, I'll flip that over. And we're just going to cut this in half. and stack again make sure I haven't got any air in I'll just straighten them edges up a little bit and then I'm going to roll it again again I'm going to flip it just to make sure that my top and bottom 
and matched up pretty well. And then I'm going to do one more cut. Uh, I won't take that down to three. Oh, no, I will. I better take it down to three just to make sure that the layers are even. Let's just straighten that up a bit. I take this down to three mil. Again, guys, just put it through your pasta machine if you wish. Just doing it this way, then you can see what I'm doing better. Okay. And then one more stack. So we've got some really nice thin layers now. You see really thin layers and I'm just gonna roll it down to four and a half I'll just get it going a bit on top then I'll flip it and stretch that bottom out a bit And of course my main aim is to make sure that I've got enough to cut a veneer out with this cutter. I'm just wondering if I should take it down a little bit more maybe. No, I'll leave it at that. So it's quite a thin, uh, quite a thick veneer really at 4.5 mil. Uh, if I was just using a stamp, I would probably take it down more but because I'm using this, uh, I'll have a bit of playroom if that makes sense. So I'm just going to take my shape that I want to use and I'm watching from this side guys because I don't want to make too much of an impression. Um, I'm probably just going to go down. That's the beauty of these firm cutters is that we uh, we can see really well how much we're pressing in. And I've probably gone about halfway in the depth of the cutter there, guys. Just making sure it's had a firm press everywhere. And I'll give that a wiggle and pull it out. And there's our Makume pattern. And now, of course, we're just going to shave uh, some off the top. So let's get my super sharp blade out. And start shaving. Now, of course, if you've used a stamp, you won't have much, as much to shave as me. I'll have quite a bit to shave off before I get down to where I need to be. And of course you don't want to go any lower than that bottom impression. Let's just get them loose bits off. some really uh, retro looking isn't it quite cool I'm just taking my time you know I'm not the best at doing this so I always take my time make sure your blades clean as you're passing With the souffle, of course, it can look a little bit crummy. I'm 
just taking my time and working my way through just so I've got an even cut I'll just catch that edge there where I've gone a bit shallow I'm just going to bring my brush in and see if I can dust some of these crummy bits away there we go and I'm just going to take a tiny bit more off this side it's just a bit higher again trying to make sure my blades clean so we can catch that little crummy bit there without going too deep we got it same here okay so there's my pattern these shavings look pretty cool I'm just going to push them loosely together for now and now of course we need to let's just make sure there's no crumbs I can see one there, get off uh, now we need to um, roll our veneer out again get this nice and smooth um, I'm just going to pop a piece of paper on the top and I'm going to put my 3mm first, I'll go in with my 4s first my 4.5mm I'm just going to give it a little roll to, oh yeah, so there's no high points I'll go in with my 3 now and obviously I don't want to distort this guys I'm just gently rolling over to roll out any high points I might have before I burnish it there we go and now I'm going, just going to go in and give it a really good burnish uh, where have I put my burnisher oh it could be anywhere now that'll teach me for tidying up won't it I can't see it and it's not in my usual tub okay I'm just going to use this card and I'm just going to start burnishing this and I can feel with my fingers that there's some low points and high points So I may pass it through my pasta machine guys, we'll see how well I get it burnished. Like I say, I went a little bit deep with the um, with the pattern, should have kept it a little bit shallower. I'll just go over with my roller, see if I can't get some of those high points out. So I don't really want to go any thinner than 3mm this veneer let's have a look it looks pretty smooth I'll go over it again I could just feel a little bit of a bump there feels pretty good to be fair guys for what we're doing so let's get our cutter now then I'm going to cut a nice square out but I also want a square cutting out um, 
around here somewhere. So let me just wipe my tiny square out. It's just got a bit of uh, clay on the cutting edge. Don't want that to mark my pattern. So if that's going about there, I want that to go about there, I think, like so. So I'm going to cut this square out now. Then I know it's lined up perfectly when I put this square on. And I'm just dyeing it in, guys. Okay, now I'm going to cut my main square out for my pendant. Just give it a slight wiggle. Again, with souffle, it's texturally a little bit different, isn't it? Some nice bits left over, actually, guys. I might uh, might be able to do something with them. Let's get rid of that. Get that edge cleaned up with my finger first. It'll just save me picking crumbs up later. Not that it helps my nails any because I just end up with clay in my nails, don't I? Okay. I need a mould. Just give it a wipe. It's got a bit of mica on from something I did the other day. Okay. Now let's get this picked up without distorting it best I can. Okay. Got it. And if I can just get that square to pop, excellent. Pop this down. Make sure it's central. I'm just going to use my finger. But again, with the souffle, guys, it's textured, isn't it? So. Sure, my edges are nice. This square's not distorted. I was checking the inside of my square. I can see a couple of little bits. So I'm just going to smooth over with a silicone tool just to make sure that those edges are nice and smooth. Um, we've not put the backing on yet, guys, obviously. Um, we're going to put a backing on and it's going to be uh, like textured through the hole with the orange. So, okay, just make sure there's no fingerprints or anything. Just letting it catch in the light so I can see the surface. And I think that will be great. So I'm going to go and part bake this. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll put the backing on. See you in a sec. Hi guys, we're baked. Um, I've just quickly gone around this edge with a nail file um, just to ensure the there was nothing too sharp uh, on the back. Um, I love the texture on souffle. It's lovely, isn't it? Right, so I've got my backing piece here. Uh, I'm just going to check which side I like the best. Um, and I'm going to push a bit of texture in for when it peeps through this hole. Uh, so obviously you don't really need to do the whole of the piece. Uh, you know, maybe just that top corner where the square is going to peep through. Uh, just make sure you do enough of it. And this is just a very gentle texture. It's um, from 
Yaroslav moulds. I have got a link in my description if you want to go and have a look. And oh, I'll just lift this up gently to show you the texture. It's very subtle. It's just like a, a an open weave look, uh, but I really like it. And I am going to put a little bit of liquid clay on the back of this because um, I've noticed with the souffle uh, dry to, um, not dry, raw to baked, uh, can sometimes not bond very well. I think it's just the nature of the texture and I'm only putting a little bit on guys, just um, a little tacky smidge just to ensure that um, everything sticks nicely and bonds. Uh, I'll just run a little bit over the sides. I'm not sure whether I'm going to uh, trim it off so you can't see it or um, run some around the side so I've got a border. Not sure yet. I'll make my mind up as I'm, I'm going, I think. Let me just wipe my fingers off so I don't want any of that liquid clay to go on the front. I've got my little sponge out to help me and I'm just going to place that there initially and then I'll just turn it over and then just use my sponge make sure that's pressed thoroughly onto the pendant just having a quick look just check them corners are pressed nicely and the edges just going around with my fingers make sure there's a nice bond and then I'm just going to in fact let's uh, do it with I'll just use a little bit of uh, clear sculpey it's just the liquid stuff guys it's because it's on my, my desk I've done this with my Jimix before it just helps you to smooth when you're doing um, certain techniques to just stop your fingers sticking to the clay and now I'm just going to put my sponge back and I don't get any fingerprints let me wipe that oil off me and I'm just going to press up with my sponge to get that texture back into my little square and I'll just pat these sides up and I think I will put a border on guys I haven't got too much left over on this and I think a little border would look really pretty on this just brings that orange out doesn't it uh, so where's my little blade there it is these are just a smaller version of the um, tissue blades that I managed to get hold of and I like them because the blade doesn't run all the way to the end, can you see? So I'm, I have no fear of cutting myself if I put my finger there. But anyway, let me just make sure I've not got any oil on my thumb. I'm just going to trim this. Try and not cut into my pendant. Now you know I'm not the best at doing this guys, a few of you have given me odd hints and tips, it doesn't matter what I try, it just looks messy I think because of the way I'm having to film it, you know it's away from me, it's under the camera, um, so I struggle to see what I'm doing properly, oh itchy nose. <laughs> Um, so that's why it probably looks a little bit ham-fisted to you guys sometimes when I'm doing this but of course if I was just doing it myself it would be quite close to my body and not 
extended away and under a camera so I think I just make it look awkward make sure that's pressed up against there just getting the excess off first guys I find that easier and then I can go around and clean up and make sure that's a really nice edge and of course with souffle we can't really sand uh, so we're going to have to make this as neat as we can and if I can't get it looking as neat as I'd like guys I'll just cut it off uh, there's no no issues that way and again I'm just trying to relax and take my time and not dig in the underlying baked clay let's just see if I can smooth that back with my finger there we go that's better I can get rid of that line then And here's Doris. Uh, can you get down? Thank you. Get down. Down, down, down. Good girl. She's not been in for a while. She's been uh, hanging out outside with the siblings. I think when the weather's nice, they're not too fussed, are they? Uh, it's when the heater starts to go back on that I find they like to be sorry guys I'm having trouble picking my blade up Making sure that corner's smoothed. Just rub my finger over to make sure that's up nice. Oh, and there's just this last bit to do. Just trying to get it as neat as possible, as I've said. Um, don't really want to be um, sanding souffle with the texture let's just get this last bit on the corner give that a smooth with my finger I think my husband's going to walk in any second hopefully if I ignore him he'll realise I'm filming Yep, he's realised. Just a little bit on this end. Just missed a tiny bit in this corner. do oh and there's a bit there 
I start to see bits as the light moves. Just smooth that corner out a bit. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to bring my sponge up and stipple to get that texture going. And plus it hides it any little lumps and bumps we might not want to see. Gets it back from being smooth again to having a little bit of a texture. I'll just get my sponge off, show you the back. Oh, got a bit of something stuck there. I'll pick that off when it's baked. So we've got a lovely texture on the back as well there guys. And I'll pop this in the oven now uh, to bake. I'm probably going to put a bale on it up here. But I will just roll some of this up as I normally do into a tube and pop it on. Um, so I'll see you when this is baked. See you in a minute. Hi guys, we're at the oven. There we go. Funky retro Makume Garne veneer. Nice bit of texture, of course, with it being souffle, it's just got that lovely soft effect. So it won't be being varnished or anything. It's a nice matte look. And there's the back, guys. Uh, nice and neat with the sponge finish and just a little. Uh, tube to put my finding in and I've just dug out this um, chocolate coloured um, cord and ribbon uh, pre it's a pre-made one guys just like the black ones I get from Aliexpress let's just pop this on there and there we go a nice pretty autumn fall pendant. I uh, hope you like that guys, just something a bit different again. Uh, I know I say that I'm not really into a lot of colour but I do quite like muted colours, uh, browns and brown beiges and uh, a touch of orange and a touch of green. Um, they tend to be the colours I go for rather than a lot of the brighter colours. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave that there guys. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye now